Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at Tuesday morning, and I'm actually here. So it is. Yeah, I'm actually here, Jay. Um, Jay, listen to That's me. That's okay. Peter, Peter. It's goes. been a while. I know. I'm, forge- yeah. I'm a forgettable face. Oh, my God. Hey, this I, ugly mug. I apologize to everyone. Well, actually, I don't apologize for you. I went to Portugal for a couple of weeks. That was fun. That was fun. And then I got pneumonia and bronchitis, the stories of which you'll hear today. Yes. And um, so I then went to Coughing Acres. That's the um, the home that oh, I run. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The home that I run. But this did is you give it to James incident. or was that all on your own? Huh? Did you? Did no, you? I gave it to everybody on the plane. I, I, I gave it to everyone. You might have caught it on the plane well, when I you did. went out. I might have caught it on the plane when I went out. Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, because I coughed uh, from uh, Porto to uh, from one city to another. Let's put it that way. That's how from it's Porto. been with the allergies this year for me. Like I mm. was taking, you know, I had it. Then it went away, and then it came back, and I was taking pills for it. But the aller- the pollen was so heavy that it wasn't enough. I mean, it just I had. Well, that's the that's the hard one because um, there's this virus that there's that attacks your lungs, and then there's the regular stuff that you get because of the change of the seasons. I think so, Jay has the virus. Oh my God! I well, he I sounded wish horrible. That horrible oh yesterday. my God! So Jay, of course. Jay Peg, we could trust you, Psychic is in here, and um, the uh, Junes, we didn't come up with it. Uh, you're not going to be a joystick again. Um, Please, God, yeah, yeah, no. No, 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 no. You are the jump starter of June. How about the jocular Joe of June? Oh, that's good. All right, the jocular Joe of June. That yeah. came right off the top of my head. I didn't even think about that Bro, one. Wow, I'm telling you, you're becoming me. That's but, okay. Yeah, and you're actually, get, you have... You have your cough drops on your side here, right? I do, yes. Yeah. Hey, um, why don't I give them an official cough? Uh, I, I'm going to give everyone an official cough. A, w- a wheeze? Yeah, here. <coughs> yep. <coughs> that's, that's, what that? I, that's what I woke up to this morning. Okay, so I went to the doctor last week, and um, after, uh, after my trip, I got home. Uh, and well, the, the, I, I'll tell you about the trip in another uh, segment, but um, I got home. And I immediately got sick. Yeah, I mean, more sick than I was uh, when I was away, which was hardly sick. I was walking around and yeah, you were good. You're okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, but when I got home, I was so sick that I said, "I'm going to a doctor right away." Well, I couldn't because I got home on a Saturday, and the doctor was so I had a day of 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 rest. Can I say Noble Express Care? Well, I did. Oh, wait a minute. No, I lied. I went to Noble Express Care. Okay. Oh, my God. You're right. Exactly right. And they treated me well. And I uh, took an x-ray, and um, uh, I didn't have pneumonia at that point. Uh, or, uh, and they gave me some stuff or whatever. And then, yeah. uh, then they told me to see my doctor on Monday. Yep. Uh, so I followed through, and I saw my doctor on Monday, if I wasn't better. And I wasn't better. And I saw the doctor on Monday, and she told me to stay in bed. So... Uh, Peter, that's when it you was canceled lo- out on last Tuesday. Oh man, 
I was, I didn't do anything. It was like being in, I hate the word nursing home, but it was similar to that. Just I traipsing was, around the house. Uh, oh, well, not only traipsing. I, you know, I had an aunt who slept in a chair. I don't know. Did you have any relative who slept in a chair? I've slept in a chair. Oh, yeah. You have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, James was so tired of my coughing uh, that I went into my office where I have a, well, this folding chair not folding with a recliner kind of, or one of those recliners that stands up you know it sort of deposits you oh i don't uh, know yeah, yeah. I sl- uh, i've slept in a recliner before you yeah. keep your feet up and yeah. yeah 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 well i sat but i didn't i i found that the best way to do it was to sit up straight yeah uh and so do not recline yeah, but you no. keep your feet up yeah it's exactly right mm-hmm. and so i did that for six or six Seven days, honest to God. And you're, it's better last off. Last night was the first night, night I was able to sleep in a bed. If you're having problems breathing, my do- a doctor, I think my doctor once told me that if you're having problems breathing or you snore really bad, mm-hmm. um, you're better off in a recliner because it's less taxing on your body to sleep in a yeah. recliner than it is flat. Well, then I started to get, of course, I, I you know me, and I, I, I ruminate about everything. And so I'm lying there and I'm thinking, wasn't it's not it ruminate, it's procrastinate. Uh, procrasti- yeah, well, I was thinking and thinking and thinking, and I kept thinking, the Gulf... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay. You want a cough drop? Oh, I love a cough drop. Okay. The, uh, the Gulf War, uh, now you're going to say, how does this connect with the Gulf War? That lovely um, uh, guy on, on uh, Fox News back then, Tony Snow... Or wh- I think he even turned it into a... Uh, there was a, an NBC guy. A, or an MB. No, it was David some... Who was yeah. in a tank for, you know, in a yeah. position for a long while. Yep. In an enclosed position. position, And I was thinking, geez, this is sort of like an enclosed position because I can only go certain ways. And I was thinking, geez, am I going to add gonna to my... You're not going to get blood clots. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Well, David, that's what um, what the hell is his name? Was it Snow? No. No, no, That no, no, was no, no, Tony no, no, no. Snow. Yeah, Tony Snow's different. Um, but did David... Oh, I, I know he, who you're he, talking about. Yeah. He, yeah, he was embedded with the troops, mm-hmm. and he, he got blood clots from it, and mm-hmm. yeah, and he passed away. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and that was one of the worries that my... You know, you know when you have... When, when you're the king of medicines, I'm not the king of medicines. I'm probably I might be a the prince. king of medicine. You're probably the king. All right, all right. I got a row I take in the oh, morning. Oh, yeah, do you? Yes. Um... I moved them out to the kitchen island so that I could remember them because I have the row that I take ordinarily and then I have the row, including the breathalyzer. Or Nebula- a, nebulizer. Neb- nebulizer. The breathalyzer is what the cops give you. The nebulizer is what, yeah. yeah You're yeah, drunk, yeah. sir. Blow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so nebulizer. Yeah, that's to help. That's to open up the bronchial airways. Well, that's opening up my bronchial airways, all right. And... Um, but the problem, and so now I went yesterday and I got a clearance, etc. They said, you've got to be very careful. Um, I don't have pneumonia. I've still got one lung filled with um, crap. Yeah. And the other lung is clear. So the bronchi- now it's bronchitis. They've, uh, last week they were worried. They were calling it pneumoniositis. Walk- like a walking pneumonia. Like a walking pneumonia. Yeah. Which I may have had in... in um, in Portugal, for all I know, I, I you know I didn't know whether right. I was being uh, barraged with uh, allergies or, or or whatever. Yep. You know what I'm finding out is that I'm not good nursing home material. No, you need a you're an assisted oh. living guy. You need well, activities. Yeah, I'm not. I you know, and I I I see. You have the old school notion of of a nursing home where it's where it's. 24 7 care Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. haven't been exposed to an assisted living facility where you have an apartment and is that like walt fogg and his wife down there in liberty now this is living a liberty Uh, liberty heights i I think it's called um uh you know it's it's a different animal now than it was before so Mm. you have an apartment you get around you do your own thing you can have your car you can go around you can do your thing and then they take care of the meals Mm. And they do the ground, so you don't have to worry about mowing a lawn. Yeah, you know things like that. So that's what they do the about. meals as well. Yeah, you go down for your. Oh, meals. I'm, 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 no, 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 no. I've just learned to cook. I've got. I can't. I got it. No, 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 no. But each even of, in my each ba- of the apartments has kitchens. Oh yeah, I knew, I I do know this. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because my my wife's grandmother was at Reed's Landing, where she had her own kitchen. Mm-hmm. She could cook if she wanted to. Right. 
But there were also three really good meals a day down in the, in the dining room. Right. Cooked by Ray of Elvis. Isn't he the, uh, isn't the Ray Gilmette the uh, Reed's uh, Landing chef? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he is. Is he really? I think he was for a long while. My father was the model, one of the models for Reed's Landing. He didn't live there. They hired him. No kidding. No, yeah, yeah. To to be one of those people that look like they're having be a good time. Be one of the job. shiny happy people. You know, cocktailing my, with insure, you know. My wife's grandmother had a had a great time there. Oh yeah. Oh, she yeah. really loved it. And that and that was one of the only other places she lived in Buffalo. So I mean you well, know Well, I tell you. I, I you know, there's a certain time for people and there's a certain time for stillness and there's a certain time for for for, for me to enrich myself. Absolutely. Last week it was more stillness than it was enriching. I didn't re- enrich myself until the middle of the week. Um, you needed to rest. I just needed my body to just conk off. Yeah. And so this week, of course, I've got big things happening in Westfield, and I have to sort of get Don't overdo over. it, Bob, because then you will get pneumonia. Well, that's right. So I'm warning everyone that um, uh, I, if you see me, oh, and then they diagnosed me. Okay, this is the other thing. I didn't want to take my iron because I, they, the, when they, the, the people in the uh, ER saw some iron deficiency. And so I didn't want the regular doctor not to see the iron deficiency. So I didn't take my iron pills. And so now I'm back on my iron pills. So if I look a little pale, tell me so that I can go home immediately and take my iron pills. Um, if you're uh, supposed to take it, Bob, you're supposed to take yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know. I know. So, but if, anyway, if you put your body out of whack, it, it takes longer to heal. So that I, means if you're supposed to take an iron pill, take a stinking iron pill. Yeah. I right. You sound like your mother. Right. But then I have to take I then I have to take another pill in order to uh, take care of the of the results of of the iron. You know, I don't want to immediately go. You know what seniors talk about all the time: the bathroom. Well, uh, the the iron in the bathroom yeah. sometimes don't mix. You see, gotcha. So, um, Not a problem. And so you have to make sure you're drinking lots of fluids, and um, and I have to take my fiber. So then I remember to take my fiber, and oh, uh, oh, you, you know, need a, you need a schedule, Bob. I need somebody sitting next to me telling me what to do. No, I don't, because I'm then sure that sounds like a, sort of like a nurse. I'm sure something. we can find a CNA that can help you with that. Oh, no, I don't need that at all. No, 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 no. Actually, no. Bob, you need a personal assistant. You know, that might be a good idea, only I think I'd drive them nuts. No. no can you imagine me all day long? Come on. I could. You could. You could ma- the two of us? Sure. As long as we didn't have to walk through the living room of where the television is, where the Fox News is not on and CNN is on, and then I'd walk through again and Fox News would come on and then we'd be fisticuffed. You know what, Bob? I, I haven't watched a lot of news in general because it, it, whether local, national, whatever, I just find it depressing. Oh, well, it's becoming a one-note samba. And, I, um, and, and it's all the same. It's like, oh, my God. It, and mm-hmm. It's the same note. But it's different. It's different. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, different instruments. How's that? Same note on both sides of the that's aisle. Very true. Different instruments. Oh, that's a very good analogy. Very, very, very good metaphor. I um, like one yeah. side's playing a flute and one side's playing a tuba. Yeah. No. Yes. Exactly. And, but it's the same note. Mm-hmm. And then you've got and these sound, people that aren't sounds- playing anything at all, and and you just wonder where their minds are. Those that's, are the. Th- those are. That's that's some of the people who are. Not listening to all, you have to listen to all the channels. Did I'm you now, hear? you know what's done. Know what it's done for me is I'm listening now. I do turn on Fox occasionally to hear what what is the opinion happening. of the other side. Yeah, but you know what, Bob? We, we and which proves to me the opinion that I have is the correct opinion. Usually, that's what yeah, 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 you know. Uh, but we talked about this yesterday. We did a whole hour with Senator Hummison. Mm. That the week before on George's show, we talked about an automatic. You, do, do George uh, Delisle and Don Hummison are two diametrically opposed people in a right, sense. Right, but we agree on some things. Ah. So the week before, we had a, a an activist from Common Cause on to talk about um, automatic registration. So, uh-huh, so sure. instead of opting in at the registry, you have to opt out. Ah. The other part of it was at uh, Medicare. I think was the other one. Right. Or Department of Transitional Assistance. So those places you would have to opt out, right? Because right. they have a really good database. That's that's the theory. So you and opt said, out of voting. Right. So either so you can you're automatically registered, right? Right. 
Bang, uh-huh. you're done. Okay. At birth? No, no when you when go you with get your, your license. Get, get, when you get your license. Right. So, so and that's about the same time you can vote anyways. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah, so, right. so that makes sense to me. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. I said to the lady, and I think I threw her for a loop, saying, okay, that's fine, but now you have a flood of new voters out there. Right. Make sure they keep teaching civics or start teaching civics in high school so you don't have a flood of uneducated voters. Well, you're going to have a flood uh, a flood of uneducated voters because I don't think they listen. I, I'm general, but, but generalizations just, never work, but, but I'm, I'm not trusting general, that they're, they're informed. You, if, you, if you talk to the, the college kids out here right, when they're here uh-huh. and yeah. ask them if they can identify all three branches of government, right. I would be willing to bet that most of them can't. Oh, I, th- I don't think they can. Right. Oh, I don't think so the average that's, person on the street. But that's what I'm saying. Everybody out there, ask yourself if you know the three branches of government. I do. Mm-hmm. I was brought oh, up yeah. that way. Uh, right. Yeah. Mm, Executive, okay. judicial, and legislative. Right. right. We also have, to a certain extent, two of those branches on the local level. Can you name who they are? Two of those branches on the local level. Who's executive? Um, that would be the mayor and, and the, uh, the Who's city legislative? Council. And the legislative would be the court system here. No, no, no. No, would be the police. Legislative. Well, it's divided legislative into the... Legislative is the city council. Oh, that's right. Right. Oh, so, that's right. So that's, that's what I'm saying. So, you need to so, identify... So, so, yeah, Most right. people can't identify what they have <coughs> right in front of them, right? Yeah. That's why I said to the lady, I said, would you as a common cause activist... Right. ...be one, willing, one, to, be one willing to push just as hard the, the bill of for to teach civics in right. high school... Along with your bill, mm-hmm. because one goes in hand with the other, and they shouldn't be separate. And at what point and, do people and get... And she almost agreed turn, with me. Well, well, I really agree with you. I think that there are... Um, I, you know, I kind of like that opt out, because if people have to opt out of voting, what they're saying is, I no longer have a right to complain. I have right. no longer a right to... Um, I am just like the person who's just accepting the dole, if that if that's the way you look at right. it. Right, and civics teaches you to show up. Yeah, yeah. Show we up. Got the, the, we have to have people to show up, but we also have people to show up with knowledge. That's the that's the right. Thing, you know, and, and Senator Hummison's point was, he says, he does, beli- he be, does he believe in? Oh yeah, he's su- showing he, up with knowledge. He's, he su- he supported, except there was problem was is there was unfunded mandates in there. Uh huh. And he says the school departments across the Commonwealth already have enough unfunded mandates. He wanted some, because it was a graduation requirement that they had to have it. Yes. And he says you can't give an unfunded man like mandate like that without giving the school some money to do it. So uh, that's why I he was, it. that's why, and he said that's the only reason I voted against it. Uh, he says it's in conference now, and he says I hope that provision gets dropped so I can vote for it. Here's a brilliant idea before we go to break. What about at high, in high school and maybe in junior high, Six, four to six years of civics, of, of issues, instead of, of just, issues and whatever. Instead of just and then when they graduate, And then when they graduate, when a person graduates from high school, they get the right to vote. Well, they would because they'd have their license. But they would have also have had to have passed four years of Well, they of were civics. talking about, I think, one or two years of civics, which is plenty. All right. I had... I had yeah, but I, I think want I people had, to be able to. I think, think I had two semesters of civics sprinkled in my, sprinkled in my U.S. history. Uh-huh. But in U.S. history, they're not teaching civics. No, they're no, teaching no. U.S. history. Yeah, yeah, and and if you're in the right in the in the wrong class or the right class, I don't know what's. Uh, I only got up to the Battle of Actium. Uh, uh, for some that reason, was world history. Bob. World history. Oh, was that it? Okay, I didn't get up past the Civil War in the U.S. history. They didn't go me on the Civil War. Of course, the Civil War had just been fought. So I don't know. At oh, any rate, for hey. Sakes. Oh, all right. Okay. So at any rate, here um, I I gotta make myself happy. And this song, I don't care whether it's a Christmas song. It's not a Christmas song. Um, the weather today, after yesterday's heat. It's going to be in the upper 70s. It's going to be better today. Uh, I think yeah. we're supposed to get to 80, 83 today. Oh, is but it it's, so it's low. I think lower. it's going to be a little bit less muggy. Yeah. Oh, it was awful yesterday. At, on top of, at Coughing Acres, we were coughing. I'm sure you were. <coughs> I was too. <coughs> there it is. So um, I've got my love to keep me warm. This is K-Star. I played this at Christmas. It just reminds me of my youth for some reason. You need to feel warm and fuzzy. Buddy. All right. Here's K-Star. This is a remix. So it's a remix of the old K-Star 1950s version.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Comcast and Xfinity.com. Offering Xfinity TV, Internet, home phone, and home security services. Information on all that Xfinity has to offer in the Westfield area is available online at Xfinity.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Wally Computer Associates, one of the largest technology providers in North America. Headquartered in Southwick, Wally provides all of the products and services that you'd expect from a world-class technology partner to schools, colleges, businesses, as well as state and local governments and agencies. Wally Computer Associates, meeting all of your technology needs on the web at WCA.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Wow, it is Tuesday morning, June 19th, 2018 and counting Oh, better yet, Bob, on that discussion we had, yeah. this, is my, this is my motto. It's been like this since I was about 25. Okay, gotcha. Great program. Who's going to pay for it? Ah, uh, who, who's going to pay for it? We've been talking politics off air. And that's, uh, and that's uh, okay. We have a friendly discussion on politics. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, sometimes it gets crusty, but we, we always come back to friends. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. it's okay. to de- That's debate. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind debate. Sure. I was taught in cathedral that debate is productive. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes your mind can be changed, like that whole discussion with George and the automatic voter bill. Yeah, okay. My, the, my question on the who's going to pay for it was answered. Yeah. Because the federal government gave grants to all the states to modernize their voting system, and this program qualifies for that. So ah. it's already funded. I got it. So that's good news. Yeah, okay. and I had no problem with it. All right. It. So one of my thoughts is what, what um, who's going to fund if you it sometimes has to be countered with what's the What's the way, how do we do this immediately or how do we help now? And, um, and also Yeah, but then there's the law and there's your heartstrings. See, people oh. are trying to circumvent the law by tugging on your heartstrings. Well, the heartstrings sometimes are much more important. I mean, the heartstrings talk family. But without the, law, the, you the, have the, chaos. You, well, <coughs> all right, here we go. But well, nah. Um, hey, That's it's six. Yeah, I know, I know. We should get into six twenty four. Six twenty. Is it six twenty four? Now this clock says six twenty seven. Uh, I got six twenty six over here, so I that's about so, a minute fast. Okay, so we're six twenty six. My in watch, the I got updated. It's um, a little slow. And today it's going to go. Let me into the upper eight. Uh, no, mid eighties. Mid eighties. Yeah, low to mid eighties, yeah. <coughs> which is fine. <coughs> How is it going to be for our um, events this weekend? We have. A weekend of, uh, well, like Thursday and Saturday, Westfield and weekends is very busy. Thursday night, incidentally, if you don't know, is the first concert of the Music Fest series this year. And Danny uh, says David Bloom was the guy that was the, on the... Uh, David Bloom. Oh, Danny. Oh, great. Hey, I got to give a shout out to Danny Nason, a uh, great uh, friend, and uh, uh, and Lucille Nason. Lucille, I'm get, sending you some health hugs. See, she's been under the weather, and I... Uh, Lucille, um, just like me, I th- we're like two peas in a in a coughing pod or a sick pod. I, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, it's uh, a yeah. time of year. I mean, yeah. with the viral thing going around and allergies probably being at their worst, the pollen levels being at their worst that I can remember. Mm. Um, it's just it's when just does not the good pollen today. level stop being the pollen level and just be a flower? I think it's it's we're coming up pretty close today. Oh, it's uh, please God help me. Danny says Louise uh, Lucille is still at uh, Mercy Hospital. Oh, 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 God. Okay, so um, I'm I'm. Would you just send uh, all the best hugs in the world? And we I all do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, so at any rate, I was so uh, so looking at the forecast. Yeah. What is it? Thursday looks to be eighty three. And no shower, very minimal shower chances, maybe like 2%. Okay, great, great. And that is for <coughs> Music Fest. Now, um, Music Fest this year is three great uh, 
events happening. I know. I'm going to miss the middle one, I think. Are you going to? Uh, okay. That's the one. This one is The first sponsored. one is a Motown review. Yeah, and it's co-sponsored by another radio station. Tell me about that radio station. Uh, it's Bruce Marshall's radio station. Yeah, W-A-R-E. I think they, what do they uh, call what, it? What, Hit Oldies? Uh, um, yes. I, I think their tagline is Hit Oldies? Yeah, let me see. Uh, W-A-R-E and 97.7 is 97.7. Yeah. The Valley's Classic Kits. Okay, and 12.50 AM W-A-R-E, which was my old radio station. Oh, was it? I worked there, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, it's a Motown review with the Timmy Maya experience. The Timmy Maya experience. And um, I was thinking about Motown. Um, uh, and, well, first, let's give out the specifics. It's 7 to 9 on the green. And I think there is a, um, a, a band that plays, a local regional band that plays. No, there isn't? Not this year, no. Oh, oh okay. I spoke, to, I spoke to your WOW board president. <coughs> said there's no opening act this year. It's just the main concert. Ah, so 7 to 9. Yes. Okay, down on the Westfield Green. I'm stuck it's in a city free. council meeting. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Okay. <sighs> well, come on over afterward. I, I, there'll, there'll be a lot of food. There'll be a lot of good times. There's beer and wine and uh, soft drinks as well. And uh, you've got to bring a chair. Now, in this one, we're having, isn't this the Strawberry Harvest Day? Yeah, I think that. Um, it's coinciding. So, the, w- so the Church of the Atonement is going to have a strawberry. Strawberry booth, booth. as well. Yeah. And, at the, and, right. the, and four to six is the Strawberry Festival at, uh, at Friends of the Atonement. or Church the, of the Atonement. Church of the Atonement. And as then, part of their Farmer's coming, Market. Yeah, and, and Farmer's Market. And uh, then they're coming, and the farmer's market is from noon. So you got a lot of things. Noon. Thursday's to, a busy day around six. here. Yeah, yeah. And then we have the concert, and uh, the concert is always great. Uh, but Motown, Can, when you think Motown, who the name quickly, five Motown stars. One, two, three. Uh, Without the Supremes, thinking. the Jacksons, uh, Commodores, uh, Martha and the Vandellas. Uh-huh. Oh, what else? Oh, come on. Marvin Gaye? Okay, oh, that's very good. Okay, let's see if I can do five more. Uh, Mary Wells, uh, the, uh, Little Stevie Wonder, um, the, uh, the Temptations, The Four Tops. <coughs> the uh, Four Tops, okay, Martha and the Mandela's. Uh, what's the Reeves, uh, Dancing in the Street? So oh, that's Martha and the Mandela's. Yeah. Oh, man. But there's so many wonderful, wonderful hits. Um, Al Green, I suppose. Um, and I, I loved the sound. And, the, you know, I was, I was looking it up. Do you know the first real song that was considered in Motown that made the hit parade? Uh, it's a, it's a, it was by Mary Wells. Does that name ring a bell? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what was it? I have no idea off the top of my um, head. Uh, nothing can do to do to do my do, guy do, 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 from my guy yeah yeah my guy so my guy was the first Motown big hit and then proceeded right through the 60s did it go into the 70s so much I don't I I think we we, we mostly it's 60s early 70s if if that you know okay yeah 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 <laughs> so we've got Timmy Maya and the Timmy Maya experience Seven to nine this Thursday night. It's Music Fest, and um, it's sponsored by Westfield and Weekends, produced by Westfield and Weekends, with uh, a lot of wonderful sponsors, uh, our, our community sponsors, as well as the city of Westfield. We couldn't do it without the police and the auxiliary police. So come out, grab a chair, and, and enjoy that. And then on Saturday night, we have Wow, it's Cabaret. At the uh, Shortstop Restaurant and Pub, uh, Pub and Grill, it's called, uh, on Route 20. And uh, that's a, a, a great venue. Uh, intimate Cabaret. Cabaret is performances where you really get to know people up close and personal because uh, th- there's not a lot of room in the room. Well, there's a lot of room in the room for the uh, number of people that we allow into the room. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so uh, there's before, limited seating in limited the room. Seating. I think it's what about a hundred, hundred twenty. Yeah, it's about closer to eighty to ninety. Okay. And so there are some seats left for um, Samara Evans and the Jazz Professors in what we're calling Jukebox U, and um, J- Samara Evans is just a a, a, a 
an incredible performer. She's originally from New Orleans, and um, she was the queen of New Orleans until Katrina hit. And uh, then she had to move up here. She's been singing all over the place, goes back and forth. Um, she's a really wonderful star, and the uh, pedigree of, and she teaches at a university, as well as the four people, or the five, the quintet that's backing her up. And they're looking at songs of the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, 2000s, uh, uh, the songs of the century, actually. Yep. And it, uh, it's, it's really good. Now, that show starts at 8 o'clock, but they have a cocktail hour before with wonderful hors d'oeuvres. The price is $30. It's a benefit for Westfield and weekends. People often say to me, how do you pay for all of this? Well, oh, that's how you pay for it. You have to have fundraisers. You have to have fundraisers. There's not yeah, a lot. Of, there's events. some. There's very limited grant money out there for the arts. Right. But you know, you guys. I know you guys write a lot of grants. Right. But you still have to fund it all. Oh, and the man. corporate sponsors that you have are wonderful because oh, yeah. they really, they really, they really pick up the the slack. But oh, you they know, really do. You got to. You can't just ask everybody for money all the time. You got to raise money on your own too. Oh man, and you know um, it's true, yeah, right? And um, I actually, each one of these concerts on the green for on a th- on a Thursday night, like this coming Thursday, yeah. uh, maybe twenty thousand. Yeah, I don't know. And, I mean, and like that's, so you say, and that's where's with, that? Where's and that, that money come from? But and that's with the help of the DPW that does it gratis because mm-hmm. they believe in the event. Mm-hmm. That helps with the auxiliary police who are doing it gratis because yeah. you know that with you know you give them a donation right. to help for equipment and stuff like sure. that that they gotta otherwise foot on their own right but it's not what they'd get paid if no. it was a detail right no no and um, um and that's why we have a community sponsor or, or sponsor such yeah. of, and that's uh, why and, you and can pull it off yeah. is because you have a lot of people who are helping you yeah and that's but, what people don't seem to understand well you know i want them to understand that so when we ask for an extra dollar or two on a saturday or thursday night um that they really recognize that they're in it as much as we are and that if they enjoy it, it, it's sort of like voting. If you enjoy it, you got to become sort of a member. And how do you become a member? Well, you get you become a participant by giving something by get by, by Buy a throwing 50, a dollar. Are into you doing them. a fifty fifty raffle? Yes. Yeah. Pay, sure. pay a couple bucks for the fifty fifty raffle. That helps. Absolutely. Now, Every little bit helps. So let me give you the uh, June twenty first is the Motown Review with the Timmy Maya experience. Uh, presented in partnership with the Valley's Classic Hits, 97.7, where? Bruce Marshall. Bruce Marshall, right. And then on July 20, uh, July 19th, Thursday, July 19th, 7 and 9, is our Kicks Country Concert, uh, sponsored in partnership with uh, Kicks iHeart Radio. And um, that's with uh, a, a, an up-and-coming Have they announced uh, national, yet? Yeah, it's Craig Campbell, his name is. Okay. And um, and Joseph Gallant is the regional artist that's going to open for um, for him. So it's uh, Craig Campbell. Um, every year they seem to uh, be giving us some. We're, we're people who are one or two years out. Oh my God! From hitting the charts. I think I think we had Dirk Sprentley a couple of weeks uh, years back. Probably a long uh, time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, we had. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've had some. We had um, what was it? The, <coughs> uh, Natalie Stovall on the drive. Oh, wasn't and, she yeah, here? Oh, yeah, sure. sure. And, and she was Cass here. City Pope. Yep. Oh. She's she's huge on the charts oh, right now. Oh man. So we're getting them one to two years out. Oh yeah. It's it's it's. So you want to see the stars before they become stars? Before you, you got to pay forty five bucks oh, in an arena to see. Exactly. Them. Throw a dollar or two into our our, our 50, 50 raffle and you can help out. Then on uh, Thursday, August sixteenth. Oh, this is the Western Mass All Star Jazz Big Band. But the big star is Wanda Houston. With a name like Houston, you know, she's... Uh, she's Related really to the family? I think she is. She's a professional singer, actress, and song stylist who has traveled the stages of the world. And um, she is... It's, it's uh, jazz, gospel, rhythm, and blues, but it's a 17-piece orchestra. I'll be back for that one. Oh, so. my God. That's going to that's gonna be great. I so, think I had a light version of the jazz professors at the Pumpkin Fest. Oh, you might have. I mean, yeah. With Ed, I think. Ed, uh, yeah, there may have been a, a lighter version, but this is really that was like an eight piece. Yeah, no, that I had the pumpkin fest. It was eight pieces. Was it eight pieces? Yes, I know because I had to do sound for Holy it. Holy mother! Okay, well, this is a great experience. Uh, that's Saturday <coughs> night. Samara Evans and the Jazz Professors in Jukebox U uh, at the Shortstop. You can get your tickets at the uh, the Blue Umbrella Books as well mm-hmm. as. Um, 
at um, the senior center. If you're a senior, you get a little discount, I think. Yep. Um, and um, you can go online at westfieldonweekends.com to also get your tickets at, through PayPal, and you can get them at the door. $30 benefit. You get great hors d'oeuvres, incidentally. Really great hors d'oeuvres. Hey, so it's um, Let's take six, a break. Yeah, 6.40 in the morning. Um, hey, um, Father's Day was this weekend, and so I finished watching the Eric Clapton uh, documentary. The really sad last days of Eric, well, the beginning of Eric Clapton. And, um, and I was really touched that he became a father, and then that changed his life. And then his son, tragically, fell, fell out, out of a window. Yep. And I thought, oh, and my God, he's going to go back into the drugs, into the depression. No, instead you know, of... We didn't work his, for 10 years. Instead, it went into his music. He went into his music, and the thing that started it was this song called Tears in Heaven. I think his first thing back was the MTV Unplugged show. It might have been. And he really has gotten his life together, and all for the good of, uh, of, um, uh, of music. Of all of us, yeah. Of all of us. And so this is Eric Clapton with Tears in Heaven. This is the first time he played it. He played it on an English television program. It's a short version, acoustic version, Tears in Heaven. Well, yeah, we could play a bit of that. It's called Tears in Heaven. Programming is generously underwritten by Whip City Fiber, Westfield Gas and Electric, where they offer gigabit internet speed. Whip City Fiber, turning Westfield's neighborhoods into fiber hoods. On the web at whipcityfiber.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Wow, it's Tuesday morning, and boy, it sure is Tuesday. It's June 19th, 2018. It's good to be back. I am uh, suffering from a little bronchitis, but I'm on the end of my bronchitis. So maybe Bob will keep to his break schedule today. Yeah, well, I'll try to keep to my break schedule. You know, um, we've got the uh, the diva of uh, book books here, um, the book baroness of Westfield, 
Um, also, the real estate royalty of uh, of, of Western I'm, Massachusetts. I'm adding and titles. I like Upper this. Connecticut. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure. And you're the Duchess of of uh, all things uh, Jessica Martin. Ah, good, uh, morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, um, talk. I've been dubbed. I've been dubbed the Jocular <laughs> Joe of June by, I, my, by myself. I heard that on the way in, and you Isn't came up nice? with it right on the fly. And yeah. I was, oh my God, hmm, Jocular I Joe! I yeah, love that. Impressive. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you like right. that one? And probably better than anything Bob would have called you. So that's well, it's <laughs> well, better than that darn joystick. You I know, it's, every time I come up with a J, I get a joystick. It's four know. years, so I figured I'd, I'd help Bob out <laughs> once in a while. Oh, man. By the way, Bob, one of the weeks you were away. Yeah. I played a show from August 8th of 2014. Oh, my God. I was young. Where, How, where you which, had, which, where you so had, which uh, show did you play? Kelsey Vayette and uh, Jared DeHarnay in here. Oh, my God. Now Remember they're, they were now playing they're, the two? Now they're in, 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 in working at Coughing Acres. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Remember when they were sitting back here as a duo and yes. she was singing? She was sure. singing? Yeah. 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 Oh, wild. And I think you had, uh, what's his name, from Mofroyo here, too. Mm-hmm. And he was in here. They were talking about a concert they were holding in their parking lot that weekend. And I remember doing that concert. Oh, oh wild, wild. I hope people didn't go to that concert. I uh, did. Uh, oh, it you was know, a good uh, show. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> At any rate. It was a good show. Oh, no, I know it. But I mean, if they showing if they, up, they, if they showed the up. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I show up for the Mofo-Yo concert. Well, they wouldn't see a stage out there. <laughs> Mofo-Yo's not there anymore. Oh, no, that's true. Oh, how Jeez. times change. Um, hey, but well, I think about that for just four years ago. Four years of doing this, honest to God. Have I learned a thing in all of these years? <laughs> I haven't made you a conservative yet. Yeah, no, you haven't. <laughs> no, no, you haven't you, at, at all. But um, no, I've learned a heck of a lot. I've learned a lot uh, by having great guests. Somebody said to me, um, actually, I was standing at the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, we have that little, we have coffee for people who know that we have coffee. So they, they <laughs> their secret coffee they, is that what you're saying? Come in <laughs> Those in they, the know. Yeah, yeah. So um, somebody came in and they uh, that I didn't know and tapped me on the on the back and said, "I know your voice. You're from the radio, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. See? Yeah. And yeah. um and I and he said, "I gotta tell you, you have the smartest guests. Where do you get these smart people?" And I said, "Well, you once you find a smart person, you don't let them go." <laughs> You, There's that you smart have intelligence. Them back. <laughs> you have you have to invite them back and invite them back monthly, so you don't have to worry about uh, whether that, you you that you. That know, sounds like there's a compliment wrapped up in there. There for is me, a compliment. So oh my I god. Like oh yeah, yeah. Because you have a an eclectic kind of life. Uh, you are a beekeeper. That's true. You are a um, a bookstore maven. That's true. Uh, you are a real estate person. True. You are a, um, a queen of tattoo. True. <laughs> uh, you travel. Where did you come you up know, with that you one? Know, you, you, what a fine resume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, this is great. So, okay, so we'll start with the, um, uh, give me a tattoo tip. Tattoo tip. Uh, don't uh, get your girlfriend or boyfriend's name tattooed on your body. How about that? <laughs> that should be oh. common sense 101. You yeah, think. Yeah, but real, or real. actually, go ahead and do it and then come see us to get it covered up. <laughs> Oh, repeat real, business. Oh, oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Make it into something flowery <laughs> after cover, that. We can cover yeah. it up with something much yeah. bigger and yeah. much better. Your husband and you. Are, yes, and, my and husband and tattoos. Yeah, I don't tattoo. I always um, I include myself in the group because I, I was in the industry for 18 years. Uh, oh. Before real estate tattooing was my first career, but on the technical side, the equipment side, I didn't actually do tattoos, but I built the equipment and sold uh, to tattoo artists. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so that's how I ended up looking what, like what, this. Yeah. You should have went into medical sales. Yeah, you would have yeah. been fine. I know. The tattoo machinery that you use to tattoo is that like a um, a drill that a dentist would use? No, uh, the electromagnetic coil tattoo machine is like a doorbell. It's an electromagnetic coil that's just making a magnetic connection and breaking it, but so quickly that it's just it, it the whole thing vibrates, but it's just moving a needle bar up and down so quickly. Um, it's really just electromagnet. Does it simple. change? Does it get better? I mean, like like the dentist there the, when when I began Te going to a dentist. Technology, you know. yes. Yeah. Te technology's definitely changed. Let's talk about the dentist too. I have some dental anxiety. Mm. Um, <laughs> We need to have you on uh, the same uh, week as Kevin Coughlin. Kevin yeah. Coughlin, Bay State Dental, no, Noble Hospital. I'm uh, Bay State Dental. 
Bay State Dental's uh, great uh, uh, dentist. I, I'm developing dental anxiety later in life, which is weird. I didn't have it before. And no, wait a minute. I know. You, you I know. You, 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 That's why it's crazy. I feel like such a, a weakling when I leave the dentist and I'm like having a panic attack after a cleaning. It's terrible. I don't know what's. I have some sort of post traumatic oh, dentist disorder. I almost disorder. go to sleep. I just let them oh, do their thing and I I'm wish. out. I can't relax. There's something about the noises and the scraping and the, the new technology, I think, is what's doing it to me because when they used to just scrape your teeth with a little metal thing oh, and then oh, yeah. polish them, oh, yeah, yeah. I was fine. Yeah. But now they use like water picks and lasers oh, oh, and they're yeah. spraying oh, oh, things. No, and oh, it's oh, no. Yeah. And, and, and you hear this, what sounds that like high pitched whining. The, yeah. It's like, like fingers on a blackboard. Yeah. And I can't something. handle it. And the last time I was at the dentist, I actually closed my mouth on the instruments, which I've never done in oh my, my whole life. Oh, my God. May I suggest earplugs? Oh, my God. Earplugs, so, wait, what did you close your try. mouth on the instrument? I was instrument? also considering maybe Valium. I thought that might help, too. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah. That or a tougher or the doc can give you that stuff that you forget what you've been through. Yeah, right? What's the... Propanol the or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need an don't. IV sedation <laughs> to get my teeth clean. No, but there are... If you're really anxious... Um, uh, there, a lot of doctors are now really treating that anxiety. There's so. definitely, it's just strange because it was never a problem for me before. And I, I like to go every four months instead of every six months. Yeah. So yeah. keep my teeth extra clean. That's but. right. Oh my <laughs> God, help me. It's been, it's been painful lately. So, all right. So the, uh, your tip is never put, see, I think yeah. you should put wow on your arm you and then it the, could be the ma no, then mm -hmm. then it you turn it upside down and it's mom in that case i already have it look at that oh look wow. at oh my god we wow do right there. oh my <laughs> god is this a new one no I've, I've never really that. looked at oh this is a lovely it's a, like a young little girl now you're gonna a, stroke bob's ego <laughs> even more <laughs> on your calf I've you have your wild, yeah, what is that a young girl with a monkey yeah it's like a stuffed monkey bear type of stuffed animal oh it's so beautiful the colors are incredible and the rose above it is oh great i uh, uh, yeah i'm the only one in the world peter's looking at me like oh my god here i am uh, announcing to the world as i take people on a <laughs> tour of jessica's <laughs> leg tour oh, of my leg. oh yep. it's a beautiful leg Thank uh, you. Now, and then you have I Ivez down here. What's that? Inez. That's my mother's Inez. name. Oh, Inez. Uh, we okay. discussed that I think last we time. About oh, it last that's time. right. I don't oh, know that's if I showed right. it off oh, last time. That because yeah, it was right after Mother's yep, Day. Yeah, Mother's Day <laughs> and my mom's birthday are in the same week, so we got that tattoo for her, and uh, I just she loves it. I love it. It's okay. Fun. Okay. So, um, but is there anything that you need to know about tattooing that? Um, that people don't know. They th yes, uh, I, yeah. I can give tattoo advice for the full two hours if you oh. want to just go on it. Here's another really good one. Yeah. Good tattoos are not cheap, and cheap tattoos are not good. <laughs> Mm. So uh, that's do your all, homework. That's, yeah, but that's the motto for everything. You get what you pay for. Also true, but like if you pay one hundred and twenty thousand really dollars for a house, it's probably going to be a fixer upper. Yeah, that's but true. Well, but but how. How bad could a bad tattoo but be? With the house, <laughs> with the house, you can fix it up. It's not yeah. permanently etched into your body. Yeah, so, sure, sure. Yeah, good so, point. Yeah. <laughs> well, how bad is a bad tattoo, and how do you know whether a, a it's a bad or a good tattoo artist? So, uh, looking at pictures of work that they've done will be mm -hmm. a very easy way to tell. Uh, and it's it's very easy to look at a tattoo and say, "Wow, that's a beautiful tattoo," or "Oh my God, what was that person thinking? That's terrible." Um, there's also the difference between uh, bad tattoos and bad ideas because a good tattooer can do a tattoo that's technically done well but if the customer has a bad idea like oh this is my first graders drawing that they drew with crayons and uh -huh. I want you to tattoo it on me um, that's never going to look awesome but it's what the client wanted and sometimes as the artist you have to do what your client wants so oh, it's still man. a job you oh, know sure you're sure. essentially an illustrator you're just working on a different medium <laughs> what happens when somebody gets a panic attack in the middle of a tattoo Ooh, good question lots of so in, in this this time now it does not happen as often as it did when i first got into the business and i'm talking about like 20 years ago mm. um before tattooing was on television before everyone just went out and got a tattoo when they were 18 um it was less common that you spent time in a tattoo shop and you would have to find a tattoo shop get in the car with your friends drive to it and when you walked in the door that would probably be the first time you had any experience with anything tattoo related and you uh, sure. were going to get and a tattoo that uh, day. Oh yeah, and you know what the thinking is. As, as yes. the old people going into a tattoo parlor, 
Oh my God! I'm entering the world of the carnival. Bob, why don't I, we take I, the break I, I, right yeah, there? Yeah, right, we're take the break right there, and then enter the world of the we'll, tattoo. We'll, we'll enter the world of the tattoo. Hey, um, I I'm going to. Why don't we play Samara Evans? This is great. Um, Samara Evans. This is song number four. Samara okay. Evans is appearing um, on uh, this Saturday evening at the Shortstop Pub and, uh, and Grill. It is um, Jukebox University, Samara Evans, and the Four Professors. It's an incredible uh, evening, uh, nonstop music, uh, just incredible. You have an or- a cocktail hour with great hors d'oeuvres from 7 to 8, and then at 8 o'clock you begin the show. It's a two-act show. Uh, incredible, the four professors and Samara Evans are going to give a great evening. This is Samara Evans singing I'm Walking, the old uh, New Orleans We're going to do set. something New Orleans for you now. You ready? Yeah. All right. In New Orleans, we like to party, and everybody has to participate, including the audience. Yes, indeed, talking about you and me. I'm hoping that you will come back to me. And I'm lonely as I can be, waiting on your company. I'm hoping that you will come back to me. What you gonna do? You wanna run away and hide I'll be right here by your side For you, my darling, I'll even die I'm walking, yes indeed Talking, babe, about you and me I'm hoping that you come back to me Provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. 
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes and Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Discussions of local politics, events, happenings, and miscellany potpourri. Ken's Den, Tuesday, 8 to 10. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Wow, it's Tuesday. It is June 19th, 2018. We're talking to the Zarina of Tattoo. Zarina. Zarina. How yes. do you spell Zarina that way? T Z. Or is it T Z or T S? T S. T S. T S A R I N A. The Zarina of Tattoo. I like it. Um okay, so how much is a good tattoo? And oh, how do you how do you yeah. pay for it? Remember, that's how art. Do you, how do you it's pay a, for a tattoo? I think or it was, how do I pay? How for do a I pay? Oh, yeah. you, how do you pay for you a tattoo? You sweet talk some I work, guy. I work in trade. <laughs> you sweet, oh, ta- right. you sweet talk some guy, and he goes. Her oh, husband, who Sean. I've actually never been tattooed by Sean. That's something that we have on our bucket list for the future. But really? We, we've oh. never done that. No, Sean didn't ta- start tattooing until after I knew him. So, and I was already really? in the tattoo business. Wow. So he's a musician first. Right. Right. It came backwards, and it's one of those things where when it's what you do all day. I worked in tattooing all day uh he worked in tattooing when he wasn't traveling when you come home at night the last thing you want to do is you know tattoo tattoo tattoo. Sure, i really oh, don't yeah. open a computer when yeah, i go home. right yeah. you go home you're no. like work is over yeah. you put it away um even when you love what you do you don't want to do it 24 hours a day yeah. so so you've got you, you you're you've got an idea that you want to tattoo and okay i wanted to spread eagle on my back um uh my my the back of my Full back. Full back. Right? A full back. A what spread if, eagle? What, what called? Is <laughs> a that wings what they call extended. It? Is that what they call spread it? Spread eagle something no. different, Bob. I mean, no, I think that that's appropriate. That's where that expression comes from initially, right? <laughs> just Bob saying that, though. Bob. It just oh, sounds I think wrong. I, just, I think I just... finds a way to get a, I just, wait sort of a minute. innuendo. No, I did not mean Accidental that. Accidental innuendo. I never that's meant that. I never <laughs> meant that. I mean a wingspan yeah, eagle. Okay. Yes. All right. Now that's going to cost me a lot of money, right? <laughs> yes. Or can I just have a little tiny, little tiny, tiny, tiny eagle? You can have put a on my tiny finger. Eagle. And how, how do you know you what it pe- is, Bob? It's it's just like I with have a, a little tiny bee. Put if you on commission my a painting, right? Yeah. If you commission a painting that's five by seven, it's going to cost you a lot less than if you commission a painting uh, right, for an so, entire right, wall. Now I'm looking. You have a beautiful key on your middle <laughs> finger, and then your index finger or your ring finger. What is that? That's my ring finger. Your ring finger, you have a B on it. Yes. And the B is about, a, oh, about an inch? Yep. Okay. So what would an inch tattoo cost me? So in tattooing, there's something called the shop minimum because it costs the tattooer money just to set up their equipment. They're opening sterile items. So you have sterile and disposable things that whether or not you get the tattoo, they have to throw away once they're open. So just to set up for the tattoo, they're out a couple of bucks. So you have to pay for their time. So even if they set up and your tattoo only takes 10 minutes. Right. It's an hour minimum, I would say. It's an hour minimum, yes. So usually it's uh, on the low end, a $60 minimum for a tattoo. And then some shops go up to $100 or $120 for the minimum. So. And the minimum is an hour of tattoo? It could, be, it could be 10 minutes, but you're going to pay. Like, let's say, um, what's your shop minimum? Our shop minimum is $80. So even okay. if I'm just doing you a call, dot on you like that, it's going to cost you Look at it this way, Bob. If you call it a plumber. They probably get a yes. two-hour minimum. Exactly. And so they hourly yep, rate the service two. call has yeah. a rate, okay. and then if they do the repair, it's Correct. So, yes. But yes. then are you paying by the size of the tattoo or the amount of time that it takes to do it? Yes, to both, because the the time to take to do the tattoo is based on the size and also the speed of the artists. Some people work slower and f- faster than others, so they will all base their hourly rate on what they feel like they should be paid for their of, service. amount of colors in a tattoo affected too? Um, I would say yes, you can get a black and gray tattoo faster than you could get a full color tattoo. But again, how fast is like, the artist? It's almost like embroidery where you have to layer the colors on type yep, of thing. Yep, yep. 
Now, are tattoos uh, done in one sitting, or do you have to do, uh, like, for instance, you have a lot of tat- uh, tattoo that is connected. Mm-hmm. So it depends on how tough you are. How long can you sit still? Um, and how and there is a minimal the amount of pain, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it hurts. Tattoos hurt, and it's all different for different people. Some spots are more sensitive than others, and it depends on the person. Um, but I give me an example of that pain. Uh, what it, what I tell it, people it's kind of like it, if a cat was scratching you or a kitten was scratching you. It's annoying and it hurts. It's kind of stingy pain, but you have to sit still and let it happen. So traditionally, if a kitten was scratching you, you would Let's knock it sit. away or say, mm-hmm. get out of here. But mm-hmm. instead, you have to sit there and let it happen. So, so it does take some commitment. It's painful. It's annoying. You have to sit still. Um, and it, it takes a lot of time. So, I mean, a tattoo this big could take two hours. A, a tattoo, which is oh, maybe like three inch square? Th- three inch. Yeah. Softball size, I usually say. Mm-hmm. Softball size tattoo. Mm-hmm. Two hours, three hours, depending on how much you know detail is in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then something big, like when you do like the whole front of my leg here, I would go and start, I would get that just the outline done. Right. And then maybe some of the black shading done. And then maybe that was three or four hours. So then I would make another appointment to finish it with the color. Okay. And you also have to plan too where you want to put it because you know things as you get older things move very true and that's that's just natural process or you gain or lose weight or well so give me an example so you uh well ladies tend to have the ever-changing bodies so when you get a tattoo on your lower back or on your hip or your stomach or even on the chest anywhere um gravity gaining weight, losing weight, your body changes, things move around. The first tattoo that I ever got, I was only 15 years old. And, you know, I thought I'd, well, I'm going to put this on my stomach and then, mm. you know, no one will see it and know I have an underage mm. tattoo. Um, mm-hmm. I can't even tell you how far that tattoo has moved from its original <laughs> position oh my on God. my body. Oh, really? Thankfully, it still looks the same. But yeah, like I got it. Because you were still growing though, yeah, too. Yeah, and I got it to the right of my navel when I initially got the tattoo. Right. And now it's like way off to the right side of my body, closer to my hip. Like it's just crazy. It's, it's moved a lot. So And so your age when you're tattooed has something to do with where that skin is going to be sure, yeah. five, growing, ten years from changing, now. You're changing. You gain 20 pounds. You're, you're better off getting tattooed in your 20s. I would say yes. Stuff, also, do, stuff doesn't move as much. You're also, still it's not a big growing. commitment. And let's just say, just because you can get a tattoo when you're 18, you're still not going to make the best choice for the rest of your no. life. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> and God. And you are going to yes. have it for the rest of your life. Maybe so. you ought to have your mother or your father go with you I'm, to the tattoo place. I'm not place. saying you need to have your parents involved. No. But oh, you right. might want to say, well, I told my son, don't get a sailor's tattoo because you'll regret it. Yeah, you just, you got to, I tell people when you have an idea for a tattoo, get the picture of it or what you're thinking <laughs> and hang show it up a lot of pe- and, and show look at it all the time and you know when you're not tired of looking at at it anymore letting your go by get a tattoo okay so now bleeding and tattooing bleeding and tattooing yes you bleed yeah okay so if you were on a blood thinner probably not the best idea to get tattooed so or you would have to stop your blood thinning i wonder if they the tattoo places ask they do. There's a there's a questionnaire um, that they have you fill out because you do have to sign a waiver to mm-hmm. get a tattoo. And mm-hmm. if you do have an underlying medical condition and you're on that type of medication, uh, you would probably want to consult your doctor before do doing something like that because you are opening your skin and then you have a wound that you have to care for for two weeks. Uh, so what is your underlying medical condition and how does that affect how your skin's going to heal and how having an open wound affects your medical condition? Why does not... Like, Bob, you take iron, right? Because you have iron-deficient blood. That could be an inhibiting factor for getting a tattoo. Oh, really? Sure. Oh, I had no idea. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so... Well, think about it. If you're anemic, right, (laughs) iron-deficient blood, and you you disturb your skin over a big (laughs) section, that could be really bad for you overall. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That that's true. I, the, the amount of blood that I would lose or whatever. No, you won't you're lose not, it. You're, but you're not losing. But you're inflaming. I mean, you're not yeah, you're not actively bleeding, but you're inflaming the skin over yeah. a large area. Which okay. The skin now, is your biggest organ. Does then? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, I know this. Um. Uh. The 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 scabbing. Mm-hmm. 
Is there a scab on a tattoo? If you take proper care of it, you should not get a heavy scab. It should peel like a sunburn when you take proper care of a tattoo. Like the top layer will kind of get a little bit scaly and just peel and flake away. You really got to keep it moisturized, right? Uh, yep. You got to use your ointment. You got to use your lotion and you got to keep it clean and dry. The first three days, you got to keep it really clean and as dry as possible. The second that you start getting it wet is when you start to get those thicker scabs, which just take longer to heal. And mm-hmm. you got to mm-hmm. keep those super dry dry then you stop moisturizing if you've got scabs you stop moisturizing and let them Uh let them heal but do you return to the tattoo parlor for observation after you've got the tattoo or or who's who's involved with what Watching Healing. whether the tattoo heals So you properly. leave with instructions, and if it's your first time, <coughs> the tattoo shop should give you like a written instruction on how to care for the tattoo properly. And then once you have uh, the instructions and you're following them, everything should go, as I just said, you know, you're going to do this for the first three right. days, then you're going to do that, and then you should have a light peel, and then you have a great tattoo. Um, if something goes wrong in your aftercare, or you don't take proper care, or you have 15 cats in your house, and a bunch of cat hair gets in your tattoo. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, you me. might have some sort of i've seen that happen that's yeah. why i use it yeah. as an uh, example sure sure, sure. <laughs> um, <Ooh>. you might <laughs> yeah help <laughs> you might have some sort of skin reaction um which people will come back to the tattoo shop and come in and again tattoo artists not doctors but they do see a lot of stuff so they might be able to say oh that's contact dermatitis you're going to want to go to the doctor um so go to the doctor if you have a problem with your tattoo because right. you need something. It's going to gonna be medical at that yes. point. And also don't blame the tattooer because 99.99% <coughs> of tattoo problems yeah. are caused by aftercare. They're not well, caused because by application. They, because uh. by state law, I'm sure in Mass and Connecticut, that the <coughs> items tattooing you have to be sterile. So you're the yes, first use. Exactly. Everything and only is use. sterile. Yep. All Everything right. So sterile. now that you bring up a good point there, Peter. Um, uh, are there Me non licensed? Me never having a tattoo. That's funny. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, oh, yeah, I know it. But non licensed tattoo parlors. Uh, not there? parlors in Connecticut and Massachusetts, both, um, which are the states I know about. You do have to have a license. You have to have a first aid certificate. You have to take a bloodborne pathogens course. There's all kinds of things that tattooers have to do um, to work in a shop. Um, pay, pay money to have their license. Ask to see their license if they don't post yeah, so it. Yeah, if it should be posted right in the shop. And then each individual tattooer, because tattooers are independent contractors nine out of ten times too. Like uh, they're not employees. So it's yeah. just like hairdressing, like hairdressing or real estate. Okay. Yes, you, you rent your chair or you do a split. Daycare. Mm-hmm. Y'all have yes. individual licensing. Yep. So they all have, they should all have a, a license in their um, in their stations as well where you're getting tattooed. Uh, but yeah, anyone, that's the other crazy thing about this is anyone can also tattoo. There's no regulation on the equipment, so you can purchase it on Amazon and just start tattooing your friends in your kitchen. Sure. Really? Yeah. Which is why people get bad tattoos because they think, oh yeah, I don't want to spend $200. I just want to get my friend my Joey to hook it. me up in the kitchen. Hold my beer. Yeah. And okay. You end up with well, some all right, all right. All right. now back in the early '80s, and they're probably not a really good drawing artist. You have to be a drawing artist. Too. Well, you have to be. An you artist. could technically okay. be a good and run the equipment. In but defense I, I of those could, people, I could run the equipment because yeah. I'm a pretty technical yeah, yeah, yeah. guy. That's my thing. I'm not I know artist. how to run the equipment too, but I am not an artist. But also, in defense of what I just said about people who tattoo in the kitchen, everyone's got to start learning somewhere, and some people are incredibly talented and do start out that way because it's not easy to walk into a tattoo shop and say, "Hey, someone teach me how to do this." Yeah. So but in the early er, in the good. early '80s in New York City, when I was petrified that I was going to catch something like HIV or sure. or whatever. By going to a uh, a barber, and the barber shaves your your oh, neck yeah. with yep. the uh, with the straight edge razor with the person before. How do you ensure? No, actually, that a barber is supposed to put that in a in a um, in, um, a solution a of fungicide. Some type. That there's a solution that they use that kills bacteria, virus, things like that. That right. they have to do, and even at St. Baldrick's, you have to be a licensed barber to do shave heads oh. and they have to have the solution there and there's the state can the local health inspector of the state can come in and inspect them at any time well i you know i was in a barber shop in greenwich village of all places <laughs> and the barber took out t- took this uh, shave uh, what do you call it this gillette razor straight razor and i and i said to him how do i know that you haven't used that before and he said well i don't i i, I said i want a new one and um, and I'm just wondering how does that work in terms of tattoo parlors? 
Because that would be something that I would worry about. So everything is uh, individually wrapped, sterilized in blister packs. Um, usually it's EO gas sterilization. So the needles, the tubes and the tips that the needles go into, which is what right. the artists hold on to. Um, and should you be seeing, should your tattoo artist show you the, the unopened they package? They should open it in front of you, yes. Because again, to preserve the sterility, you don't want to open it until right before you're going to use it. So the right. client should already be seated with you with the stencil on for right. the tattoo. And then you would tear open that stuff and set it up and get it. And, and your arms should be washed? and, and yep, Yeah, and they'll, they'll soap it. Wet. You also get a, a shave, like you said. So disposable razor will come out of the package because they'll always shave your skin before they tattoo it. So uh -huh. you'll get the alcohol rubbed down, a green soap wash, then a stencil will go on and then they'll start to open and they're just about that stencil going on then i be go to right, I, I exactly get this that's shaking. when you really start to get nervous but i've actually oh. seen tattooers who practice better cross-contamination practices than people i've seen in hospitals like gotcha. i've seen nurses go at things without gloves that tattooers would never touch yeah. without you know so so this is the thing about if you're doing it at your home then i would think that that's right. yeah, not such a smart idea less likely that you have those yeah. nice sterile conditions you really have yeah. to really know the person yeah, yeah. To, well to yeah, and, and making sure that like like the the hands are washed and the yeah and the, well you know uh, what well, you the, can the watch surface. that person and if they're not doing good procedures up till with the start point they start go i'm having second thoughts yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh it's important you can yeah. always back out even even if you're in a tattoo it's poly you can always back yeah, out and, and say and i'm not ready for this tattooing is a uh, not <laughs> a dying art by any stretch is it it's no. an expanding art yeah no yeah. if anything it's bigger than it's ever been yeah and uh we're waiting for that like fall back to happen where it's kind of goes back into obscurity a little bit yeah. more yeah how long does a tattoo last before you have to get it um refurbished what do you call that re, re, hopefully re hopefully never never I mean, they would, do a good job put enough yeah, if, if pigment you got down a good job i mean some of my stuff's pretty old some of it um and it depends on where it is on your body too like there's going to be places that wear out fast like a lot of people want a tattoo on your foot a tattoo never heals well on your foot they have to touch it up all the time and it's just a pain in the butt so feet don't heal well. It ankles? Are you talking ankles? Uh, no, actually on the foot, like on, on the, the foot itself. So. Probably okay. get more skin replacement on feet than exactly. you would uh, on the upper body yep. extremities. Feet and hands just they don't heal well, so they probably need to be touched up more often than anything else. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you got a good tattoo, you shouldn't need to retouch it. But if it got to be thirty years old and the green was faded, and you wanted to brighten it up, you could certainly go get the green touched up and have a fresh new look. Sure. Sure. And are there new colors? I think they're probably getting new colors all the time, right? Yeah, there's definitely palettes of 100 plus colors from certain ink lines, uh, which before, you know, they just had primary colors. Yeah. So yeah. you have colors. this purple <coughs> that, yeah. uh, oh, it's so beautiful. I love that. Thanks. Yeah, very, very nice. Hey, 716 in the morning. It's going to be a low 80s day. Um, not a lot of rain, and it's going to be perfect for our Thursday evening concert which is the Ta Timmy Maya Experience. It's a Motown review, 7 to 9 on the green for uh, this coming Thursday evening music fest, the first music fest of the season. Please be there or be square. Hey, I, um, since I was in uh, Portugal, I'm going to play a Fado song. Do you, you know what Fado is? I don't. You don't? No. It's the national... Fado actually... Come, uh, comes from a little town called Coimbra where we visited. And the students in Coimbra developed Fado. And Fado is uh, a, a yearning uh, a play. Uh, the, the people that sing Fado, uh, from Amelia Rodriguez, who is the queen of Fado, who's no longer with us, to the modern day Fadoists, if I can call them, uh, Fado singers, are always deep reaching deep down in their souls and um th it's it's sort of it sounds like the tango a bit but it's not it um and then the guitar work is incredible uh, i had uh, two wonderful photo experiences while on my trip to portugal uh, and then i had a um uh i i brought back home a tape but i wanted to play this is the uh the new queen of photo and her name is Gisela Joa, uh, jo, uh, like, like J-A-O-A, uh, Gisela Joa. 
and she's going to sing Volstash, no, let me, let me, Voltash Stay. Uh, I, I, I read that Portuguese. Okay, it's in Portuguese. It. Okay, but you got to, this will show you how yearning it is. Let me put my glasses on here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to take this off. All right. Just get here. to the song. Um, no, I want, no, no, no. People have to hear the lyrics of the song. Oh, for Christ. This is, <laughs> this is, this is so torturous. You come back. I'm glad you came back. The shot, so the, the feelings that I felt, you can't imagine. You come back into my empty life, returns also the joy that just you can give. You come back. I'm glad you came back. I know that I will suffer again what I already suffered in the past. I was tired of crying alone so much. I prefer lies with you instead of truths without you. Holy mother. This you is came like my back. Theme song. Yeah, you came back. Such a great thing. I barely can sing if you aren't by my side. You came back, and I don't scream or complain anymore. You are the most beautiful wor verse of my fado. You come back. I'm glad you came back. The past is the past. We don't have to remember it right now. You came back, and I don't care anymore about life. When you sleep by my side... Life sleeps outside. Here's my response to that. Oh my God! Who the hell? Oh, is? but when you hear this song, you will unbelievable. It's so <laughs> filled with passion. This is just cela joie. Yes, uh, I care. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank Ainda bem que voltaste As saudades que eu sentia Não podes avaliar Voltaste E a minha vida vazia Voltou aquela alegria só tu lhe podes dar Voltaste Ainda bem que voltaste Embora saiba que vou Sofrer o que já sofri Cansei Cansei de chorar sozinha Antes mentiras contigo Do que verdades sem ti Voltaste Que coisa mais singular Eu quase não sei cantar Se tu não estás a meu Já não me queixo, não grito Esse o verso mais bonito Deste meu fado acabado Voltaste Ainda bem que voltaste O passado é passado E para que Vida, quando dormes a meu lado, a vida dorme lá fora. Quando 
duermes Cuando duermes a mi lado La vida duerme la fuera Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. Support for community radio. On WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Comcast and Xfinity.com. Offering Xfinity TV internet, home phone, and home security services. Information on all that Xfinity has to offer in the Westfield area is available online at Xfinity.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Friday mornings is something different on 89.5 FM. It's JP's Talk About Town. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Wow, it's Tuesday morning, and here's your host just putting on his earphones, (laughs) Bob Plass. Cough, cough, cough. (laughs) This is co- uh, Coughing Acres Central here. Um, oh, for Christ's sake. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well considering I'm that I'm keeping I've been... you full of cough drops. I, yes. I came prepared because yeah. I'm, I'm hacking too, and I'm, I'm probably going to make my doctor's appointment shortly to well. get diagnosed with bronchitis. Oh, oh but God. Yours is probably viral. And uh, then you got hit with the with the, with the allergies when you came oh back. Oh my God! Mine I know. is just allergies. Oh, yours just allergies. Poor, poor and, and you're sitting here in this fishbowl. I of, feel great. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. Hey, um, neither one of us are we're, contagious. We're here with Jessica Martin from Blue Umbrella Books. Blue Umbrella Books at, at uh, right across from the Green in uh, downtown Westfield. Is that right? That's correct. What to is Main it? Street. To to Main Street. Are you guys staying open late on Thursday? Uh, excellent question. I don't uh, mean this Russell. in a negative way, but it has not benefited us at past concerts. Uh, people yeah. tend to just show us their backs because they have something to entertain them. Yeah. So we have stayed open late and then not seen a single extra soul come in. So yeah, we'll it kind of depends on how the day goes. Stay yeah, up until sure. it kicks off. Exactly. Sure. That's traditionally what we do. And once the concert starts, I mean, we're usually seven, <laughs> seven, eight o'clock anyway on right. those nights, but it's it doesn't seem worth it to stay open until <laughs> nine or later because no, I think you so don't see any well. foot traffic going exactly, out. Exactly. Right, right, yeah. 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 We've got the Timmy Mai experience, the Motown sun. Actually, they yeah. want to go watch the concert too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Also oh. true, which is great because when you can have the doors open, we can hear the music, and uh, it's it's lovely. Those it, those are great nights. Oh, it's it's, it's really good. Hey, um, uh, we were talking about your husband has just got back from a tour of Europe, huh? That's true. He's actually physically on an airplane flying over the Atlantic right now. Oh my God! Mm-hmm. Well, but to to return. Home, that's the what, swallows that's why return I said, the compass. Yes, that song right. really spoke to me because he's constantly coming and going. Oh, you gotta take that home and so read it to it. So, what kind of a what kind of a band is he playing in right now? Uh, the band he's with right now is a heavy metal band called okay. Twitching Tongues. They're from uh, California, mm-hmm. Los Angeles, California, mm-hmm. and um, they are a young band. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just put out a great new record. And Sean plays uh, some lead guitar and some rhythm guitar. It's ah. great. So he's known by his reputation, and bands want him. Correct. Because I know he's played in different bands along the time that you've been here. They did handpick him. Yes, well, because when we got married, he had retired. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) kind of. (laughs) Yes, he was. Do I note some sarcasm there? He had said, yeah, he was. uh, He was getting close to forty at the time, and he said, "Oh, I don't know if I want to be, you know, on tour. I'm getting older, and all this traveling, blah blah blah." So he quit uh, a very popular band that he was in, and at the time. 
time everyone was like, what, are you crazy? Um, he was and then a, he got the he bug He was in a Grammy-nominated hardcore band from Connecticut. And um, he said, yeah, I'm not going to do this anymore. And <laughs> surprised a lot of people. And then that was actually when we got to He didn't do that for me. Sure. That was He was home because he wasn't touring. So we were able to spend more time together and actually connect. Yeah, become sure. Become a couple, yeah. uh, which was great. But yeah, he didn't last very long. Uh, well, that sounds like my friend from high school, Mick. That, that was out of it for a while, and then he hooked up with this band, a U2 tribute band. Yep. And he still has a full-time job, but they play gigs all up and down the East Coast yep. on you you know, nights, go. weekends, things like that. You want to play out when the, when the music and they're speaks good. to you. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. You really want to, uh, uh, you, you want to catch yourself at, in, a, um, in a creative exactly. era or and, whatever. And when you can actually get paid to do the thing that you love, like yeah. that's you, you got to take advantage of it so as long as you can. So he's flying all over. Now, I had an experience. God, you, 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 wait till you hear this. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> So, this could take a while. Uh, no, yeah. Well, um, uh, we flew over actually, and Delta has been very nice to us in the end um, a- of all of this. And um, we were scheduled to leave on a Friday, and we got to the airport uh, on regular time, three hours before or whatever. Our plane was supposed to leave at twelve noon. Can I ask which airport? Um, this is the airport in Lisbon. Oh, okay. okay. So, you're so from I'm in Portugal. Portugal back home. Okay. Okay. So, so, so we get to Portugal's airport in Lisbon, and um, the plane has been delayed for two hours because they are waiting for a part to come in to fix the wing. Okay. So around to two o'clock. Oh, so so we got there, and because of the wait, they gave us a voucher for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Very nice. nice. V- very nice. So we had a breakfast on them. And uh, then we came back to the place that we were, were waiting. And uh, they started to board about 2.30. Well, we got on board. We got all re- settled, ready to go. And then the airplane captain came up and said, you know, we're not going to go. I don't think this is going to be as safe as it, it should be. And we, um, uh, and so uh, I think that we're still waiting for well, that. We're still waiting for that screw. Uh, when, you're, when your pilot goes, I don't think this I'd is safe. Right I'd be like, oh <laughs> my, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Check please. Yeah, right. yeah. So we all <coughs> got off the de-planed. plane. No, mm-hmm. deplaned. And went back to wait. And this time they gave us lunch vouchers. <laughs> so now you've got a lunch voucher. So nice. we had a yeah. lunch voucher. Then we waited and waited, and it was about four thirty, five o'clock when they finally gave up the ghost and said, "For the, the day, the plane uh, from your." Uh, they were sending a man on a plane from America to the airport in Lisbon to fix the wing. Wow. Okay. So they didn't trust the on-site mechanics. That's an important man. Well, yeah. they didn't. Yeah, no, they didn't have the part apparently, and the, so the guy was coming. That came with the part. We're coming with the part. <laughs> Handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'd rather have a, a, a fully functioning airplane than a less than functioning. Mm-hmm. And say, Definitely. well, maybe we'll make it across the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. And usually, you, do, you don't hear that your plane has had a new um, had had a screw loose, as I yeah, said. That's you know, you know. Okay, so. They then announced that no, they we're canceling the flight, and so we've been there all day. Okay, and now my and and, uh, and I had Bob, do you know every nook and cranny in the Lisbon airport now? Oh my yeah, god! Right? And I know every nook and cranny of my my coughing phase because I started to cough during this oh. whole period. Okay, all right. So there, are, and it's a small plane. Okay, so there are maybe two hundred on the plane or whatever. That's not small. No, is that? Oh wait, well, could it be eighty? I mean, I got to know most. You of You don't these do a people. transatlantic without more than two hundred people. That's not cost efficient. Oh, okay. So it must have been two hundred. It was a small plane. At any rate, they then got, herded us. From uh, they said, okay, we're all get. We're going to get you to a hotel. When you get to the hotel, we're going to have a welcome party for you with drinks. Oh. Then you're going to have um, dinner. And then we're going to pick you up at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning. No, you're going to be, get a wake-up call at 4 a.m. We're going to pick you up at 5 a.m. And we're going to do this all over again tomorrow. Great. And by that time, the plane will be ready. But I think that's very good customer service. Oh, it, it, oh yeah, yeah. So then we herded, they herded us from one area to another. 
and they got uh, they there was some waiting because they were finding it difficult to get hotel rooms for 200 for people everybody, yeah. okay and it turned out that they were bringing us to the home of Muscatel. Muscatel. It's a. Did you know that 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 Muscatel, that wine, it's a syrupy kind of like port wine, comes from a little town uh, called. Uh, oh, and it's spelled Setabel, but it, they they Stebo or Stubo they call it Stubo like Stubal. Um, so they, but the town is forty five minutes away from the airport. Wow. So we had to wait for a um, a bus to take us to the airport. So we didn't get to the hotel until like 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Okay, so we had our, our drinks. I got to know 40 people. <laughs> I mean, there were, because they were sending... Did you email addresses they, and everything? They, oh, yeah, well, I, I'm still got it. Well, we, there, there were They're a couple that we... Uh, yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> when you know almost every... part, and, and so people were were dropping like flies saying, I want another airport, I want another plane, I want et cetera, yep. et cetera. So the number of people on our plane kept dropping and dropping and dropping. Yeah, that's and, what people uh, do. They yeah. get impatient. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. So we got up at 4 a.m. So we had a nice meal. We didn't get to see the town much, but we did have a free muscatel. That's nice. Uh, that was nice, and um, and so we got up at four a.m. So I went to bed at nine, and so this was good training on Tuesday for me mm. to get up. Okay, so I get up at at, at four a.m. They pick us up at five a.m. We get on the bus. We go forty five minutes to the airport, and our twelve o'clock um, uh, plane thing was. Uh, delayed oh. and we got another voucher for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> and we finally got on the plane it was like 2 30 in the afternoon and by this time i'm thinking that damn screw better be yeah you know, you know we've i've gone through a whole and, and and of course i'm coughing i know everybody now on the plane uh, and now we've you've all given know, them all your germs uh, yeah, oh my too, god huh? and people are coughing all over the place and um uh and we got in finally and got got home but um uh and but the good news is Delta is refunding us our whole flight. Oh. That's pretty good. That's and huge. then giving us a hundred dollars more each for but Being that patient. that's paying for well, no paying for the dog sitter. Okay. Mm, we had to pay for, of course. for an Denise, extra day, yep. and for an extra day in the airport, et cetera, et cetera. So we really got a free flight to Europe. Although we had to pay for all of the um, the wonderful food and oh Portugal oh I can't I you gotta go to Portugal I'm putting you, it on my list I'm, I'm moving I'm, it up oh, on my oh list oh my god and you gotta we this time we went to Porto where port wine is and we had a lot of port wine then we went to uh, Coimbra the home of Fado a student town high in the mountains just gorgeous heard some great Fado and, and had some great meals there beautiful. Um, then went to a seaside town called Nazare, uh, which is so beautiful. Um, then we went to a town where, did you know that salt is responsible for Portugal really becoming a world leader? They mm-hmm. provided 80% of the salt for the world during mm-hmm. the 16 or 1700s. So there's this town that's called the Venice of Portugal, Aviero, and we took these little canals and went to look at salt mm-hmm. flats. It was really lovely. Uh, and then we went to uh, uh, we had a day in Lisbon. Uh, on a, we 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 took one of those uh, see everything cop on half up buses. We'd been there before, so we got to see what we didn't see the first time. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then the rest of the time was in Sintra, gorgeous, beautiful Sintra, unbelievable. <laughs> and then our final day was in Stubal, Stubal, uh, where where uh, whatever. So that was my. T- uh, horror story in a way but i I mean have you had a trip like i've learned i've learned in the airport if they offer you and you can do it if you don't have to be there at a certain time and i screwed up the first time if they say we're gonna give you four hundred dollars to step off this flight Mm. you know what from now on i'm gonna do that because i found out that i I thought i had to be there at a certain time and this and the other thing and uh, my the the commissioner that flew me down there for something was like next time take it Oh right? yeah, uh, uh, I was uh, dumb uh, as a take stump. The free money. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I I, I think that it's important to, uh, to recognize that if you have that time, you really 
benefit when the, the airport or, or the airline is asking you to yeah the volunteers take it, volunteers mm-hmm. and stuff. But I've this never, was not volunteer at all. You know how many people were on? I mean, there were so many empty seats. We could sleep on the way back. You could all have oh, your own row. Oh, and my all that. God. Yeah, nice. I could cough to my heart's content. <laughs> at any rate. We need hey, a break, Bob. Yeah, we're going to take a break. Hey, um, uh, June is busting out all over. Let me hear you sing June is busting out all, all over. No. Uh, um, uh, do you know the song June is busting out all over? No, I don't. You don't what are you come? Why what are you ragging on some girl named June? June. <laughs> t- <laughs> Oh, stop it. <laughs> June is Busting Out All Over is a hit song from a Broadway musical. Name the Broadway musical. It's the name of a state. You're asking us? A name Oklahoma. of Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> June is Thanks Busting Out All Over. All right, Bob, so, let's just so get to this. You song. got a YouTube Leslie Uggam singing this song on television. This is what happened. She's on live TV, and, and, and they, she's got the words on cue cards, and so um, the cue cards fall off and she's got to walk and uh, and and sing the song and so the song goes june is busting out all over all over the meadow and the hill buds are busting out of bushes and the romping river pushes every the time he sings little, it all the song will be over okay no. all right so listen to this so so uh Ju- so uh leslie uggams uh, goes june is busting out all over the cue cards then fall all over the la da ba da do da da ba ba tu tu ta da ba ka ta tu tu ti tu tu da ba da ba little ba da bill because the Jew and you can see her and she sings this entire song making up this. <laughs> she decides to scat. Right. Nonsense. Right. Nonsense song, and um and for, and and then she she reports that now she is in every gay bar throughout America. Where now they always play, the, all these uh, drag queens are always doing, June is that busting version. out all over. <laughs> so anyway, Google that. But I'm going to play the accidentals. This is a really uh, 50s version, 60s version of June is busting out all over. It's a really harmonic version. I like this version. And it will get you uh, uh, alive today. June is busting out all over. The accidentals, spelled A X. I dentals. Just busting out all over The feeling is getting so intense That the young Virginia creepers Have been popping up the cheapest Out of all the morning glories on the fence Because it's June June, June, June Just because it's June June, 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 June. WSKB's programming is generously underwritten by Whip City Fiber, Westfield Gas and Electric, where they offer gigabit internet speed. Whip City Fiber, turning Westfield's neighborhoods into fiber hoods. On the web at whipcityfiber.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes & Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Commercial Distributing Company of Westfield. 
Now in its third generation of family ownership, Commercial is one of the premier beverage distributors of Western Massachusetts. The Plasek family and the staff of Commercial Distributing wishes you good times throughout the year and urges you to drink responsibly. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Thursday morning from 6 till 8, it's Patrick Berry, owner of the Westfield News Group. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Wow, it is Tuesday morning. June is busting, June is busting, June is busting, June is busting, June is busting. Stop June disparaging June. some lady <laughs> named June. June is, uh, oh, oh my God. Um, June Bob, is I'm busting call out the all PC over. Police on uh, you. Okay. Hey, um, uh, June 18th, uh, June 19th, <laughs> 2018. Well, I suppose Bob by this. with Pete Coles, the jo- jocular, jo- uh, what is it? <laughs> jocular Joe of June. The Jocular Joe of June. Yes. Yes. And we've got the bookstore diva herself. Hey, we haven't talked much about books. What have you been reading? So I'm almost done with The Outsider, which is the brand new Stephen King book. Holy mother. It's a big book. It's a big book. (laughs) Holy I've been taking my time now that I'm um, at the end, too. And uh, Sean also picked it up before he left so that we could be reading the same book and then talk about it while he was traveling. Uh And he blew through it so quick. So he's waiting for me to finish so that we can talk about it. And I'm like savoring, I think I have like 80 pages left. What's the setting of The Outsider? So um, it is a little league coach who, I don't want to do any spoilers, I guess from the book jacket, a little league coach is accused of murdering one of the uh, young boys, not from his team, but from town. Right. And um, it turns out he may have been in two places at the same time. Oh, so, okay. All and right. it's a bit of a detective story. So there's some uh, supernatural elements, but it doesn't get there right away. So it's more in line with his newer stuff like the um, Mercedes, Mr. Mercedes trilogy, which is where the bookshop got its name. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. And um, the, the Mercedes trilogy. What, yeah, Mr. Is Mercedes it? is a three book series um, and Blue Umbrella comes from something in that series. There's oh, a really? There's a website called Under Debbie's Blue Umbrella. You're kidding. Yeah, and it's a website where people get together to talk. Oh, so yeah, hey, I, I heard you're going off to Bangor, Maine later this summer. What's that? That's about? also Tell true. Me. That's actually like next weekend. Mm. So a friend of mine has a specialty bookshop up there, and he is running a international auction uh, of very specialized Stephen King items. I actually believe it's one family's private collection. And all the funds that are raised are going to uh, pediatric cancer research. Wow! Um, so this uh, that's affected this family's life. So you life. could get a um, uh, a f- not a first edition, but you they have all kinds of things. Yeah, they have all kinds of Stephen King first edition signed books. They have rare manuscripts. Like uh, there's a ton of things being up for auction. Uh huh. Um, and I'll Banker Maine is where, where it's, it's page, Stephen is where Stephen King lives. Yeah, the bookshop's like a mile from his house, so it's in his hometown. So do you think Stephen King will wander? I I don't know. I would absolutely love that, but um, I definitely was very happy to be asked asked to volunteer to help yeah. at the auction. So, and it's like for a good cause, yeah. and I get yeah. to see some rare Stephen King items. So, very Stephen excited. King, The Outsider. It's in uh, hardcover, not paperback. Yes, yeah, it's brand new, so it's a big, heavy hardcover. I can barely hold it up when I'm trying to read it. Oh <laughs> man! Oh yeah. Well, that was one of the reasons why I chose. I while I was in Portugal, I had that wonderful. Trip you had to my... travel. You, did you lose any books when you were traveling this time? No, <laughs> but guess what? In the middle of a meal, I lost my my bridge. I didn't lose my bridge. Oh, I still no. have. I still have my bridge, but in, on top of everything else that I told you about, I, I, my, my bridge was was dangling oh, somewhere. Boy. Yeah, yeah. Rough so time. It's what it was. But for me, I, I, I picked. Uh, I had heard that there was a new Pulitzer Prize winning book called Less by Andrew Sean Greer. Okay. Okay. And it was coming on paperback. So rather than buy the hardcover i bought it in paperback it just came out the week i was leaving and so it's much I easier to travel with a paperback oh that's man for sure. <laughs> okay 
Winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Okay. So, but prior to that, I had bought another one of his uh, older books called uh, The Story of a Marriage. And um, now, Andrew Sean Greer has uh, five novels out. Okay. The Story of the Mar- a Marriage was really a wonderful read for me. It was uh, I actually, there are a lot of surprises in the book. The, and uh, that it's, it's narrated by the, the wife in the book. And I won't tell you the surprises as, uh, because I think that this is a book that, that you'd l- enjoy reading. I'll give it to you if you want to. Yes, uh, yeah, I would love yeah, to yeah. borrow this from you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. And, and, and read this. Um, it's, it, it's an interesting book because what it does, it, it challenges where, wh- wh- how, we, how we define our relationships, how our, 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 our marriages are defined oftentimes by where we find ourselves at what time in life, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very moving book. And, I, and, and James uh, read it and said, um, it's one of the best books he ever read. Whoa. So I was really looking forward to reading Less, the Pulitzer Prize winner. Less is more. <laughs> less is, uh, no, less, less is no, less. No, less is less. Uh, actually, so less is less. It didn't live up to your expectations. Oh, my God. It's, um, you know, when, when they say that this, this less is the funniest, smartest, and most humane novel I've read since The Imperfectionists. Uh, Greer writes sentences of arresting lyricism and beauty. I'll give him that. Like Arthur Less, who is the main character, Andrew Sean Greer's Less, the book, is excellent company. It's no less than be dazzling, bewitching, and be wonderful. Hilarious and touching. No. Well, I didn't laugh once. Whoa. And he got a blurb from Ann Patchett on the front cover there. Oh, oh my God, yeah. And, and, and where does Ann Patchett say On the some? front of the book. Oh, it, it says, I recommend it with all my heart. You know, it's a book that you, uh, it's it's about a writer who decides to take this uh, around the world in 40 days. He's older, he's turning 50, and so it's coming to grips with his uh, his solemn life, his alone life, mortality and everything. And it captures many of the places that he visits. As a, uh, as a writer, it goes to Italy, you go to Italy and Mexico and Morocco and... Um, and it's a and, and France, etc. It's a it's a good book, but why it won the Pulitzer Prize is beyond me. That's a an uh, interesting yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. I often find that with award winning books, I I can see maybe why they won the award, but I don't generally enjoy reading them. If that makes sense, like I don't. yeah. Oh, I mean this one, I I would say okay, I I like it, but the story of a marriage is for. And then I thought. Well, maybe it's because of his body of work, his five novels that he's printed out or that yeah, he's published. I don't even know what the regulations the criteria. are for the prize. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be an So individual. I went back to look and to see what the, uh, the other books are. Well, remember that book that we read, All the Light You Cannot See? Yes. Well, won a Pulitzer Prize. Beautiful book, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful book. Um, the the uh, Donna Tartt book that you love so much. Goldfinch. Won a Pulitzer Prize. Yep. So no, I, I, it was just on my end of things that I, um, uh, I, I, I think I, I don't know. I got less <laughs> by got reading less. less. Out of less. However, <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I, I pick it up. You'll enjoy it. But I <laughs> would enjoy your reading the story of a marriage I'm by going Andrew to. Sean Greer. Um, so actually, a change of pace after oh, the Stephen King. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, and that will surprise you in a lot of ways. And it's a good book book re- review. Whatever. I have a question for Yes, okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Hello. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, uh, Bob. This is Ellen Next Door. How are you? On Overlook. Oh, Ellen Next Door on Overlook. Hey, Ellen. How are you? Good. What can how I are do? You? Good. I wanted, I wanted to pass on some information. So last October, I was in Lisbon. Ah. And when you were in Lisbon, did you visit the most, the longest operating bookstore? In the world. Oh, incredible! And you know what? It's uh, it's J.K. Rowling's bookstore, where uh, where it's devoted to um, uh, the the works of J.K. Rowling, and you have to pay to go into the bookstore. Believe it or not, now is that the one you're talking about? No, that, I was. I there, there's a certificate of Guinness 
Rowling. Oh, Center. I know this one. Oh, yeah, Porto is where I'm talking about. There's a J.K. Rowling bookstore in Porto. She was talking about Lisbon. Yeah, Lisbon. Oh my God, it's up in the um, <laughs> it's the university. It's got books well, from floor to ceiling. Well, it's called the Bertrand. B e r t r a n d. Ah, yes, yeah. But so when I was there, I. I don't like to buy anything that I can't put in the palm of my hand traveling because mm-hmm. it's about sending it back and all that. Sure, so of course. I bought a, I, and I am a patron of the Blue Umbrella, by the way. Oh, lovely, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, so I thought this topic would be interesting. But anyways, I got a book bag. And of course, it's in, it's in Portuguese. So yes. I said, nice fellow, I said, can you translate what it says on this? Yes. So it's a quote by Alexander Herculano. Uh-huh. And it says, The secret of happiness is to find our joy in the joy of others. Oh, sweet. Oh, it's lovely. And so you're carrying this book bag from Portugal with this wonderful expression. Do we find our happiness in the joy of others? No, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh that's very nice. Isn't well. that nice? Yeah, don't you think Portugal's a, a great land? Oh, please. Oh, man. I'm, th- I'm telling you. I, I really, Ellen, I, 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 that's the second time I've been there. I go back. Um, I, I could live there, actually, and, and eat their fish and um, listen to their fado. Did you hear some good fado music? Did you hear some music while you were there? Yeah. I stayed Airbnb, and I stayed in a place that the building was 400 years old. It was amazing. Oh. Uh, Oh, yeah. I, I was really lucked out. I got three Airbnbs. Well, actually, I got them through Booking.com and one through Orbitz uh, that were, oh, so beautiful and so well done. And under like $100, $80, and this is for four people. So, yeah. you know, you're paying $25 a night or whatever or $50 a couple. It's really wonderful. How about Sentra? Did you go to Sentra? Oh, Sentra the- is one of my favorites. That's one of the reasons why we went back to Portugal. We stayed in, um, uh, I stayed in two different spots in Sintra, the, uh, but this time I stayed at the Hotel Bliss, uh, Sintra Bliss, right downtown. And uh, uh, oh, just lovely! Oh, what a wonderful place! Love uh, it. I had lunch right there on the beach, overlooking the beach, with all windows in the restaurant. Oh, the, uh, the sangria was to die for. We had red and white, and then. You pick out the fish, and they bring the fish to you and show you the fish before they cook it. Oh, you greet the fish that you're going to eat. Yeah. Oh, and then it stares up at you like you you're eating me. You've said <laughs> hello to me. Now you're eating me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. America, we do that. At any rate. Hey, Ellen. Thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Um. So, uh, um. Uh. The name of the bookstore in in Lisbon is what? Because you. The Bertrand. Okay, I'll tell you all about it because I, it, I, this is going to clinch the idea of our, yeah. our bookstore diva is going to Portugal. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for calling. Bye everybody. Um, bye everybody. Here I you am. Could, bye, you bye. have about six more minutes. Six Bobby. more minutes. Yes. Hey. Um. So. Um. I would recommend the story of a marriage by Andrew Sean Greer. Um. I would recommend less. Less, a book called Less. The main character is Arthur Less by Andrew Sean Greer as well, both in paperback. And um, just prior to leaving, I read a book called The Black Tower by Louis Bayard, which I got down at your shop at the Blue Umbrella Bookstore. Um, and it uh, it actually was about uh, uh, Marie Antoinette and Louis the Sixteenth had a son, and whether it, uh, he's alive or not. And it's based in Paris. It's a historical it's a really fiction, good yeah. historical fiction. A really good book. Um, I'll give you. Th- you may take that back to your store. Of course, I I'll love give that. it back Recycling to you. Recycling the books. There I we are. I, I also want to mention yes, um, that uh, I just finished. We have book discussion tomorrow. Ah, uh, what do you got? Uh, the Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Oh my gosh! And it's yes, an it's a book, memoir, but it's me- a memoir, memoir. And we try to shake up the you know the genre that we're doing for yeah. book discussion. Um, and that book's always been on my radar, but never read it. And yeah. man, that's the a wild ride reading that book. I really enjoyed it. Well, it so what the Glass Castle is? It sounds to me like it's uh, looking at a, a person's life in with their family. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it in a Texas town? They part of it is in Texas. They end up in West Virginia, but also uh, a lot of it's in New York City. So ah, poor family. Very poor family. Crazy parents. Like just ah. really like how children can 
overcome the parents who are working against themselves. <laughs> oh, God. It's really, oh, yeah. I, I love it. So The Glass Castle, do you remember who wrote it? Jeanette Walls. Oh, Jeanette yep. Walls. And the movie came out, I want to say, last year. There's like a newer movie, which I have plans to watch. I haven't seen it yet, but Woody Harrelson's in it, so it's oh, a big movie. Oh, I'm yes. expecting that will be pretty good because, I mean, some of the scenes that she writes in that book are unbelievable and would really translate well to film. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Hey, um, uh, so... Uh, we love having you on. Uh, happy travels. Say hello to your wonderful husband for Will me. Will do. Uh, and um, uh, the bookstore, okay, is uh, blueumbrellabooks.com. Yep. A- am I right? And Got it. Uh, we didn't talk realty, but you're a realtor. We didn't. That's true. We can we can talk about that all next time. We we did tattoos today. The tattoos. How do you like it? Right. We talked bees. We talked tattoos. Honest to God, Bob's that's right. bronchitis. I know. My bronchitis, bronchitis. Portugal. We cover a lot. We in this did short cover it. Time. Covered a lot. Hey, we're going to end with a um, a song from Motown, the Motown Review, uh, with Timmy Maya, uh, the Timmy Maya Experience, spelled E X P E R I E N C E. Uh, Are you sure? I am <laughs> Is sure. Is that your final answer? I am. Well, there's a posting online. Where they've spelled experience with A N C E and uh, experience, uh, experience, yes, yeah. Answer. But um, six to seven, no, six to uh, no, seven, seven to nine, nine Bob, on, on the, green. the green. You can show up a little early because the the beer tent may be open. Oh yeah, and they've got food and and a lot of. Good also, times. you can come have dessert because the strawberry dinner, strawberry is that festival, night, and, and have strawberry shortcake on the green. Yeah, and here's the other thing: bring your um, <coughs> sunscreen. Your sunscreen and a chair to sit in. Yes. As well. And on f- Saturday night, um, tickets at the door at Blue Umbrella Books at 2 uh, Main Street in uh, Westfield or at the Senior Center where you get For a discount cabaret. if you're a member. It's the Cabaret Se- uh, Se- uh, Jukebox U, it's called. Yes. Starring Samara Evans and the Jazz Professors. And that's at 8 o'clock with a cocktail hour with hors d'oeuvres. You get free hors d'oeuvres. You buy your cocktail. You have some incredible hors d'oeuvres. There you go. Uh, and um, that is Saturday night. So it's Wild's Cabaret. To get all the information about everything that's happening, uh, Westfield, go to westfieldonweekends.com. Um, have a great day, everybody. I'm going to play I Heard It Through the Grapevine from Marvin Gaye. Uh, this is one of the top songs of uh, Motown, and you'll probably hear it this Thursday night on the green. Uh, Thanks, Jessica. Thank you for having Uh, me. Talk to you soon. Everybody get out there and volunteer. I heard it through the grapevine.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. He rules the roost on Thursday from 6 till 10. It's Patrick Berry. Community Radio.